light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Glory to God forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you called Timothy and Titus to be evangelists and teachers, and made them strong to endure hardship. Strengthen us to stand fast in adversity and to live godly and righteous lives in this present time, that with short confidence we may look for our blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, last couple of weeks anyway, last week we talked about the, the, uh, the tradition in the Church of the Virgin and Martyrs. Now we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about the widows. At least one widow, actually, uh, this week in the Roman Church anyway, there's uh, two widows being commemorated. Both of them have something to do with each other. But we're going to actually commemorate the widow for uh, whose feast day is celebrated on the 31st of January, St. Marcella. We've celebrated her before. We've celebrated her and Paula and... Utopia, Eustokia, something like that, whatever her name was. We, uh, we commemorated the three of them at some point. Well, we're going to commemorate uh, St. Marcella tonight. We're just going to kind of keep it just to her alone. And uh, we'll probably be talking, I know we will be talking about uh, the common friend they all seem to have, St. Jerome, who makes us roll our eyes because he was such a grouch. But that's all right. We'll hear about St. Marcella. Her feast day is January 31st. The quote that we begin is a good one. Uh, by heaven's grace, captivity has found me a poor woman, not, not made me one. Now I shall go in want of daily bread, but I shall not feel hunger, since I am full of Christ. All that we know of Marcella is contained in the many letters which she received from her friend, St. Jerome, and especially from an eloquent memorial in which she called her, quote, the glory of all the saints, and particularly of the city of Rome. Marcella was born to a wealthy and noble family of Rome. Uh, and again, she was born in 325, died in 410. So you kind of know the history here of when she was living. It's pretty long time. After the death of her father, she was urged to marry and did so. Her husband was also a wealthy man, but his death left her a widow after only seven months of marriage. Henceforth, she resisted all invitations to remarry happily dedicating her life herself to a life of chastity, which kind of ties into those virgin martyrs that we were talking about, except she's not a martyr. Uh, when, uh, uh, when a ranking, uh, uh, an elderly consul proposed to leave her all his money, she would marry him. She answered, if I wish to marry, I should in any case look for a husband, not an inheritance. <laughs> I should, um, I should
should use that quote for some of the people that I have coming uh, to to do pre-marriage counseling. I know that that's the whole reason that Annette Morrow is married. I have been I've been joking Annette about your wedding like crazy. Last week, last Sunday, I said it was a shotgun wedding. Now I'm saying you're doing it for the big inheritance that you're going to get from Mark Hitterdahl, because you know there's a whole town named after Mark so in Minnesota. So. But you're just getting it all. I'm, I, yes. Well, I know you can. Especially the shotgun part. <laughs> the shotgun part, yes. <laughs> We've been very worried about that because we also have the baptism plan. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just so. Anyway. Oh, what a horrible priest I am. After this, Marcella's life was occupied by prayer, study of scripture, and frequent visits to the shrines of the martyrs. Now, this was a common thing at this time. This is what Christian people did. Um, they led lives of prayer, they studied scripture, and they would go around, especially in Rome, where all these martyrs were, they had been buried, essentially, in the catacombs. So they were all, by this point, made into, into shrines. And churches were starting to be built around these places. So uh, it, was, it was a thing that one did. Uh, she gave away all her fortune, preferring to store her money in the stomachs of the needy rather than hide, hide it in a purse. At this time, she came across an account of the life of St. Anthony and was inspired, as much as uh, her uh, circumstances would allow, to emulate his monastic life. Thus, she began to enter a community of like-spirited women, both widows and unmarried maidens, who shared her appetite for holiness. Now, what we see here is the beginning stages of monasticism, Christian monasticism. This is how convents started. And of course, convents later on would be uh, a big part of, of the church. Most were of similar social background, though they conformed to Marcella's voluntary poverty. Though they welcomed no formal rule, this was perhaps one of the earliest such communities of Christian women. Now, Again, I always, it seems like every week I'm telling the, you know, saying essentially the same thing, but there were limited options for women. Either you, you were uh, this, these virgin martyrs or these women who were consecrated, which were considered very strange in those particular societies for the most part, at least for Christians, or you were this, these married women or widows. So to be able to start forming a community amongst themselves was a very powerful thing to do. Uh, and there was something really wonderful and unifying in that. And, and this would later become kind of a standard through Christianity. This, is, this was a, an op another option for women at a time when options for women were somewhat limited. When Jerome, St. Jerome arrived in Rome, he was introduced to Marcella's circle of holy women. And he was induced, somewhat reluctantly, to serve as their spiritual director. I'm sure it was reluctant for him because he was a jerk. He was kind of a grouch. So he didn't want to be spiritual director for anybody, I'm sure. Especially this community of, of women who no doubt probably kind of fell all over themselves for him. Because, you know, they, he was kind of a, despite his grouchiness, kind of enigmatic. Um, so impressed was he by their learning and piety that he compared them to the holy women who surrounded Jesus. Marcella, he claimed, was another Mary Magdalene. A member of these women became his lifelong, uh, a number of these women became his lifelong friends, including the holy Paula, who was also one of the, the, the three that he, especially, that we commemorate as Christians, or as uh, saints. She, uh, uh, so frequent a visitor to this community, was Jor uh, Jerome that in a slender, uh, in, a sla um, in a slander loving place where the triumph of vice was to disparage virtue and to defile all that was pure and clean, his enemies found ample material for gossip. Now, of course, that was going to be a the thing. There he was, this grouchy old guy. They he made enemies everywhere, and here he was hanging out with this community of women, and that would have been just ripe for a lot of gossipy stuff that was going on. Anybody who wanted to go after him, that was the thing to do. Um, such, a, uh, and, uh, such an atmosphere contributed to his decision to flee Rome for the Holy Land, with Paula following closely in his wake. Nevertheless, he maintained his close correspondence with Marcella until his death. So uh, Jerome and Paula, and I think several other women went off to the Holy Land. Marcella stayed in Rome. Uh, she continued her holy life until in 410, 
It was the sack of Rome, which was a horrible, horrible experience. The spectacle of this, viol of this violence and the ensuing famine made an impact on the entire classical world. As Jerome wrote, the city which had taken the whole world was itself taken. At one point, the invading hordes broke into Marcella's house and beat her savagely in order to discover her hidden treasures. In vain, she protested that she owned nothing but the robe she wore, and she had fears lest they would take even that from her. Nevertheless, her brave composure arrested the assault, and eventually the shame-faced attackers escorted her to the refuge of a nearby church. At 85, she found it difficult to recover from such a traumatic experience. Marcella died within a few months. Uh, though her sisters wept, Jerome writes, she smiled, conscious, conscious of having lived a good life and hoping for a reward hereafter. Uh, it's, it, I love these kind of stories too. I love the stories about uh, the holy widows as well. Um, Annette, uh, so in Roman culture at this time, uh, would, a, would a wealthy widow have been held in uh, in, in esteem, I mean, even earlier in, in more of the pagan culture, would it have been uh, the widow, would she have been considered a somewhat uh, hot, would she have been considered somewhat high up on the social pecking order? Do you know? They would be expected to remarry as the They would have, oh, so for her to not remarry was another defiant act. It was. Almost as defiant of an act as oftentimes the virgin martyrs were making in their own lives. Oh, that's very, very interesting. So, uh, again, their worth was within, was in relation to the men of their society. So, yeah. In some ways, sometimes they had the money, though. And they were in charge of the money. They, the dowry was attached to them. So exactly. And the men had to be nice. Well, there you go. Uh, I love these stories. And uh, we'll, at some point, of course, we'll commemorate Paula, we'll commemorate uh, the other one, Eustokia, or whatever her name was. And, um, and we'll commemorate them again, because I think that they're also just as important as the Virgin Martyrs, to a large extent, in uh, commemorating these very independent, strong women of the church, which we really need to commemorate on a more regular basis. So. That's the story of Marcella. I think it's an interesting story anyway. I hope you find it as such. Let's close tonight with a prayer for Marcella. So let us pray. Almighty God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses. Grant that we, encouraged by the good example of your servant Marcella, may persevere in running the race that is set before us, until at last we may with her attain to eternal joy through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our Lord. Amen. <laughs> During the season of Epiphany, I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. Your word is proclaimed in all the world. We pray tonight for the Anglican Communion, and especially the Episcopal Church, and for all members of this church, especially for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and for all the holy people of God, holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your spirit is at work in the world and here in this congregation. We pray for this congregation of St. Stephen's, that we may grow in our love of you, and that our service to others may be pleasing in your sight. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You desire to free those who have no advocate. We pray for the poor the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. 
and for those in any need or trouble. Holy God, hear our prayer. Your word was revealed in the flesh of the person of Jesus. We pray for all those who seek you or a deeper knowledge of you, that they may find and be found by you. Holy God, hear our prayer. Your son Jesus found a home with Mary and Joseph. We pray for our families, either by blood or those friends who come to us as extended family. Holy God, hear our prayer. You endure from age to age. We pray for those who have died, and especially those whose faith is known only to you, that having, having fought the good battle on this earth, they now rest in the blessed reward of you and all the saints. Holy God, hear our prayer. You hear all who call upon you. We pray for our own intentions, repeated either silent or aloud at this time. Pray tonight for Leon and we pray for Mary. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all those in every generation in whom you, O God, have been honored, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Stephen the Martyr, and all the saints, and for grace to glorify you in our own day. Holy God, hear our prayer. prayer. Light of the world, let your bright star stand over the place where the poor have to live. Lead our sages to wisdom and our rulers to reverence. As we travel far and fast, lead our minds back to the wise men following your star and forward to the day when all will see your shining light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. Uh, also with you. Peace, 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 everybody. Peace, everybody. Uh, please be seated. Just a few announcements before we begin. We need to have quite a bit, a few, uh, we have quite a few things going on in the next uh, week or so. Of course, this coming Sunday is our annual meeting. Uh, uh, we will be having a potluck afterward as well. So please do plan on joining us for that uh, meeting. It is not going to be Zoomed or live streamed. So if you'd like to be a part of it, make sure you just come to church. And people will be socially distancing down in the undercroft. So uh, plan on being there for that. Uh, this will be my last Sunday before vacation. I will be here next Wednesday uh, on February 2nd for the Feast of Candlemas, the Feast of the Presentation. Uh, we'll be blessing candles and uh, all of that fun stuff next uh Wednesday, and then I'm on vacation after that. Uh, throughout February, Deacon John is going to be covering for me while I'm gone. He's going to be checking messages. So if something comes up, just let Deacon John know in one way or the other. You can just contact him or leave a message here at St. Stephen's, and he'll be checking on that as well. While I'm gone, we have uh, kind of a variety of people who are going to be uh, preaching and presiding. Well, not well, presiding too, presiding too. So on uh, February 6th, which is my first Sunday away, uh, Mother Mary Johnson. Uh, from out west, she is going to be here. She is going to preach and preside, and we love Mary. She is a wonderful priest and a great friend of many of us here at St. Stephen's. So that will be a lot of fun to have her here. I don't think we've ever had her here before. So this will be a good thing to have her uh, come on over and be a part of it. You'll enjoy her and you'll enjoy whatever she shares with you uh, in her sermon. Uh, the next Sunday, uh, the 13th, uh, John will be doing the whole kit and caboodle that day himself. You're all very excited, I'm sure. Absolutely. Of course, I will be watching from home, judging silently. I know. Yes, you know, <laughs> because that's what I do, right? I'm well aware. Yes. So don't be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like putting you off. Nothing like setting you up for that, right? Yeah. Because no, I, I, I yeah, actually do, yeah. Some the bishop had in his sermon, just no room hmm. to judge when they I don't remember that. Okay. <laughs> um, 
February 20th. <laughs> February 20th, uh, Deacon John will be officiating at our service, and that day we'll have Jean Sandal preach. So we're always excited when Jean preaches, so that will be happening on that day. And then on our last Sunday, the 27th, uh, Mother Zan Nets will be here. So we love Zan. She's one of our dearest friends. She's been here uh, before several times, so it's really great. So you're going to get a wide variety of preachers and 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 presiders and everything. Uh, as you probably noticed, I was kind of heavy on the women on this, which was kind of purposeful because a lot of men have been just happy to be volunteering and just stepping up to a lot of leadership roles right now in, in St. Stephen's, uh, at least liturgically, because we're just kind of stuck in that cycle right now. We just have that weird kind of cycle. So uh, it's good to be having a little variety of women coming in uh, just so People don't think we're planning it that way. It just kind of worked out that way. So uh, we're very grateful for all of that. Uh, then we have another big thing. I am actually going to sneak back from vacation to do a very special event that's happening. Annette, do you want to share a little bit about what's going to be happening on the 26th of February? Well, I will be getting married to my darling Mark Titterdall. Yes, and it is not a shotgun wedding, and it's not about inheritance. Uh, it's just going to be fun, is what it's going to be. So uh, I'm very, very excited about coming back to do that. And so that will be wonderful. And so people do understand why we're doing it like we are. Uh, the reason we're doing it is actually because Lent starts on the 2nd of March and because we don't do weddings normally in Lent. So that's why we're doing it that way. But because I know the gossip will fly. No, <laughs> it's not right. gonna fly. Nobody's gonna gossip fly, but that's the real reason why we're doing it uh, on the 26th and why I'm willing to come back from vacation. Well, I'm doing it because I really want to do it as well, but of course. So it's gonna be an exciting, it's gonna be an exciting couple of weeks uh, at, at St. Stephen's. So make sure you, you uh, either are here or you tune in through live stream. That will be a good thing because you're going to be getting a great uh, treasury of, of stuff going on. Right, John? Absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely building you up on that one. Great treasury. You know what? You should sing that song that Bishop, that Bishop Tom sang last Sunday. I worked that into the sermon. When you're judging, there's no room to love. Exactly. <laughs> See, you even remember the lyrics. <laughs> Sandy remembers the lyrics, and there I am just judging people. That's what I do. That's how I, what I got on that sermon, though. No. Uh, no. no room when you judge, you know. I have lots of room for lots of stuff. Um, uh, the, and I do want to say just about that. Bishop Tom was here last Sunday. It was a wonderful visit. We're very, very grateful for Bishop Tom and his presence here with us. Uh, we had a wonderful Sunday. We had confirmations and receptions and reaffirmations, and we welcomed new members, and we had a great reception afterward, and we asked him a bunch of questions, and he answered questions, and it was just a great day. And I want to just say this. I told him afterward, but I'm going to say it again publicly. It, it is so refreshing to feel affirmed as a parish uh, by him. And uh, it's been a long time since we've been, we felt really affirmed, I think. Certainly, personally, it feels really good to be getting that from, uh, from the bishop. So I'm very, very grateful for Bishop Tom and his presence here with us. So any other announcements that I might be forgetting? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
God of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Our liturgy continues on page 7. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. From before time, you made ready the, the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. Yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God. To deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy son of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke, it to it, broke, uh, <laughs> broke the bread, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After, 
As supper was ending, Jesus took a cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Marcella, Blessed Paula, and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And everyone here, of course, is welcome to receive Holy Communion. Let us pray for those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who feeds us and gives us eternal life. We pray for those who cannot be here at this time to consume these gifts of his body and blood in this bread and wine. But we pray that they may receive the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. Grant that we may all continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. 
And may Christ's bright star enlighten your mind and heart as you strive for equality, justice, and kindness in the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Now let us all go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.